stable place to put down. It'll survive. Just don't smack into it. Well, <laughs> what I'm talking about is just trying to move it and they move the camera. I got it. Don't worry about it. Okay. Quiet. Let me go adjust it. Guess what? This little thing here, we won the battle. Amen. 
And that is about it. Anything else? Yes, at uh, seven thirty. Huh? He said seven. Seven thirty. You don't have to change your time. Oh, it is. You change. You change your time. We got to change the Thursday because keep grandkids. Okay, keep it six thirty then. Oh, we will keep the Wednesday night. The has everybody all messed up now? Yeah. All right. Did that mic just cut out? Huh? I think your mic just cut out. Yep, yeah, it did. Batteries. Yeah. Oh, it's still plugged. Okay. But I'm done. It was just hard. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was working. See, Whatever. I'm leaving. You just pulled it away from me. <laughs> that metal in my jaw. Yes. You ready for us to stand up? All right, so I stand up. All right, Sam. Sing going on here. So
Maybe yeah. she is here, well, but I tell you what, you folks are getting wound up this morning. That's good. How y'all doing this morning? Good. good to see you this morning. We know we have been gone today, but we're glad you're here. You're making it special this morning, and I'm glad you're here. Now, if I score you, folks, if I do not seem to want to shake your hand, please take it graciously. It's nothing personal. Yesterday after I left here, uh, as I headed home, and then we were, my wife and I were heading to Leavenworth, not the prison, but go to, stick, go to the prison. Terry was hoping they were going to lock the door and throw the key away. <laughs> <laughs> and that was his invitation yesterday. But suddenly I began to read through the irritation of my eye, and, and uh, you know what it's like to sit through a play and you can't really see it really clearly? And, and then it got worse as I got home and put my drops in the eye, so I'm doing better. Don't have a pain this morning or discomfort, but uh, I, I hope I don't have pink eyes, so I'm keeping them every night. I'm keeping a distance from you, okay? We appreciate it. Yeah, uh. just, stay, just stay out there, will you? <laughs> and, uh, just sure. There it goes, there it goes. And I love it. This is really happening in recent days. And uh, I just love the fact that what's happening and the commitment of people. And if you haven't noticed, uh, you look out of the arena, and guess what? The arenas, the rails are out, the, the, the panels are out there, we're getting ready to get going out there and get that up and get going. But I will say something, it isn't about what we do, it's about what God wants us to reach, who He wants us to reach. And that's what it's about. And that's what I said to you, and uh, if you've been uh, listening to me carefully, and I'll smile, because sometimes I realize that not all of you are listening to your pastor. <laughs> Because I've been speaking, the fact is that I've been distressed about this a little bit as a church, in fact, quite a bit. But I said, one of the things is that we, last Sunday I preached, and part of my message, the fact is we haven't seen anybody saved in the last year and a half, at least. But you know what? God has a way of working because he's moving the hearts of people. And guess what? We had a young lady get saved last Sunday. Guess what next Sunday is? After, at the end of the, this part of worship, we're having baptism out by the cross. You know what? We can the Lord. I see my family. Are you young adults? There's a lot of young adults. There's a movement among the young adults in our church. I love our senior adults. You know why? You're not stuck on being some of your adults. You want to reach out for the glory of Christ. I'm going to decide what God is doing. And that's what is happening in this church. Because God has said to me very quietly, very, just that I call it in constant nudge mode, I call it. Get back to what you were supposed to do. <laughs> 17 years ago. Not make the same mistakes, but the target where we're about. Yeah. Reaching the people we're called. And so it's going to take some time, but you know what? If you can grasp hold and say, that's the vision I want to be part of, I don't expect you to be cowboy, if you're not cowboy. I and mean, we have somebody here who just, he has to take his wife, no, no his wife takes him places, but he makes agreements with her to check out cars on the way. So he's a car person. So that's okay. You know, every person's different in this room, aren't they? Yeah. But we know the folks are what God's called us to be in the room to reach. And that's what it's like. I don't recognize this building. <laughs> so, and that's a good thing. And some of you say, well, I don't have a place or involved ministry. I want to tell you something. Yeah, you do. Because you know what? we got a place for you. It's just a matter of just finally say, what do you want to do? Or what can we put you in? It could be that a couple people will say, well, I'll be part of this ministry here. And that's important. So that's significant in every way. I took some time this morning to say that because I'm just excited about what's happening in the church. And I want to thank each of you who've been part of the journey here. And I think it's most of you who have been part of the journey and what God is doing. And that's just what God's wanting to do. And so, uh, anyway, so Vicki, what do you got to say real quick? Uh, what ministries are there so we can find out whether we want to be on them? Is there a list? Not really, because when people just stepping up and starting to fight and fill in where they say, I can do this, I'll do this. Yeah. And, yeah. Then, and that they need to be filled. Okay. And everything. And as far as anything else, we'll get back to you. <laughs> <laughs> we're still coming up with this. I'll tell you what, we're, we're doing things we haven't done before. Yeah. And, and and it's awesome. You know? So if you just say, I feel left out, we don't want you to feel left out. We want to find a place for you. And uh, it takes time. The, they, they're down in the oh, hold on, barrel racing deal for uh, Krista. Oh, but but the bottom line is this, he and I were talking the fact is that the bottom, the smaller cowboy churches aren't the same as some of the bigger models that the kind of AFCC, the American Council of Cowboy Churches, worked on. And we say, so we're working on a different model a little bit, but we want to get people totally invested, completely. And it's neat, when I've been typing up, Greta's been typing up, 
and the list of going, man, this person, this ministry, this ministry. And it's not something like, I'm part of this ministry. No. Can I do this? That's what's happening. Can I do this? Can I do this? You know, and that's what's really neat what's happening. So, you know what? There's a place for you. You right? Yeah. Brother Dave, we're going to go. Hi. Somebody got to tell me to announce this. Uh oh And she's ducking her head now behind the piano. <laughs> when we was reorganizing, we found a, a sack of barcodes from Best Choice Food that you get off the, the food. Like, Your labels? Yeah. And we are thinking that it would help us to do, in a sense, for the community dinner. Yeah. But for that. You're the... Ahead. Can you say anything about it real quick? Because I'm a little tongue-tied here. Best choice labels, we get uh, three cents of labels for thirty dollars for a thousand. Thirty dollars for a thousand labels. How many of you people eat best choice food? There, look yeah. at that hand. Just that little barcode. Take third take, take five seconds, cut the label off, and bring it to church. There's a red pen out there on the four year table. Coffee, <laughs> drop it in there. Every thousand dollars we get, every thousand coupons we get thirty dollars. And we're thinking about that going to the uh, into the community dinner because we got a little shortfall there right now. It's there. All we got to do is take time. And David will tie on to that something that Brother Lee brought up to fact is how do how do you use Auburn Pharmacy? You know what the caps is it right the caps off of your prescription bottles? Auburn does this only for churches. <coughs> There's a collection deal that you bring it to up there, and then there's how much do you do you know how much it is for so many? Ramona does. What's that? Twenty five cents a lid. Twenty five cents a lid. Folks, I've already been told to switch pharmacies already. I wasn't aware. But the fact here we we know our stewardship is what we give, but this is a way that people here's a bit of entity a pharmacy that says hey do this and we'll give money for this. It's only the churches. Isn't it amazing? So, you know, those are things that can go toward helping the community be because that's something we're very much invested with. Anyway, so, hey, just a thought. I said to Lee, I said, we're getting a little relaxed this morning here again. But, uh, hey, that's what we're about as a family. We're excited what God is doing, so be excited where we're going. So, note those two things of area of ministry, how you can help in. Hey, last Sunday, because uh, they were playing music before the service, our head usher, our head host, guess what he did? He just started taking off when we started singing music on the other side of the block. And then, so, so when it came down to offering time, I was saying, what's all get time to offering? I saw you all look at me like, what are you talking about? <laughs> and then it dawned on me. We don't even give an offering at the start. Dave wanted to pass it twice. <laughs> Dave and Dave, you keep getting the, keep meet the budget well, right? <laughs> So, well, you know what? Bottom line is this. It's a time of great joy. It was a little special. I don't understand it, but you know what? Are you enjoying the music you're playing as you come yeah. to the church? Yeah. I said we're relaxed for this morning. I will tell you something. Bottom line is be prepared according to it. Then we'll switch into our, I call it, our time of corporate worship. So, anyway, so here we are. I'm going to pray, and Dave will take the offering, okay? <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this body. We're working through some dynamics together. Lord, we thank you. The fact is that you are faithful to us in carrying out this responsibility. Lord, I just pray for us as a church that uh, as we're catching fire, catching a fresh vision of the vision of what you want us to be and want us to be as a church, I pray, Lord, I thank you that each person will involve in ministry and not become possessive of it, but rather say, I do it for Jesus' sake. I do it for the faith. We're going to see new people. But we're going to plug those new people in. We want them to be part of the family. We don't want them to know Jesus personally. And so, Lord, it's about a life that's called to be radically different. And a life that makes an impact on others because we invest ourselves in it. So, Lord, we thank you today for that. Thank you for us as a church, family. God, for your comfort, for what you've been giving to our church. Thank you, Lord, that your comfort has been to those our family that have gone through loss in their family in recent days. Encourage them. May they be just knowing that the grace of Jesus Christ is so theirs, and they find delight in the hope in Christ Jesus. Lord, we just pray, too, 
<coughs> that you will uh, continue to show the work of what you're wanting to do in touching and healing of bodies and renewing them in the power of the Holy Spirit and be joyous in all of that. So, Lord, we just praise you for it. We thank you for what God you're doing. So now, Lord, we are here to further worship you as we give tithes and offerings. May we do so with abundance of overflowing, and as the Bible tells us in, in 2 Corinthians, to do it sacrificially, to do it with joy, do it with a pleasure, because it's all about you. So we give to you now faithfully in Jesus, powerful and wonderful name we pray. And God's people say it. Amen. 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 Let's say it together and sing and give together. And as y'all sing this song here, just, just take a moment and uh, reflect on your personal relationship with, with God and, and, and what you chose to do. This song kind of reflects that for all of us.
But there's an investment. Do you realize a man of God, when he invests in something, in people, and they walk away, it hurts. Saul wasn't walking with God, was he? He turns back. Do you remember how we looked? That never did Saul say, my Lord. He always kept saying to Samuel, your Lord. There was not an ownership. As I thought this morning, as I was standing here watching you come take the elements this morning, and I saw, and I already said before, where she got here, the fact is that, you know, everybody's going to be baptized, and she's going to be back, Lord, I thought, what a new place to be at, to know Jesus as Savior Lord. Yes. What really it meant, and even then, we still don't grasp it all. That's why Paul says, the things of Christ are still a mystery. How do we grasp it all, of how He died for us, and shed His blood for us, and that redeems us. It's beyond my comprehension as well. Uh oh, somebody's coming up to see this guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, look at me that way. The rest is like, she's mine, not yours right now. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So, but anyway, the thing about it is, I see this, and I'm thinking Saul is Samuel's been mourning about this. There's sadness because he sees Saul rejecting God and not doing the plan. And you know what? We in a sense can say, you know what? That's exactly what we often feel because there's been times of rejection or when there's loss. We feel like we have been pushed aside and pushed down and we have no part of anything. Don't we all feel that? When death comes, what do we feel? Man, we feel that separation, the loss. The voice isn't there to be heard. The ear to receive my voice isn't there to receive. The thoughts, the, the, the characteristics are not there that we remember once were. They're in our memories, but even in time, the memory fades, doesn't it? We don't want it to, but it does. Because life fills in the blanks with other things. And God designs it that way. I'm not going to say who, but I knew somebody that lost their spouse years ago. And the, person, the question was asked to them, do you trust God more, or did you put too much into your spouse? Boy, that made them think. Because the fact is, is that the person would say you don't regrieve the, loss, the one they lost. You don't. You don't not, not grieve, you grieve. However, <coughs> does it dictate your life? Well, for a time it does. It does. But the thing about it is you don't stay there. You know, I know people, and I mean, my wife's family, you know, she had a cousin that was killed, a drunk driver, I mean, her and her fiancé. Bless her Uncle Leah, the fact is they kept her bedroom for years. Her room exactly like it was when she was killed. That's inordinate amount of grieving. It really is. But they eventually find it, they do records how they changed it. My point is this, when we have loss, how do we handle it? What do we do with it? And what does God say to us? Samuel found out right away, why are you mourning? You've had enough time now, this is, God, this is Stan's version. You've done this enough time now, it's time to get on with it. It's time to get some action here. It's time to, I have some new things to do with you. Because we looked at this for more last week, remember we said, Fill your horn up with oil. The horn is that receptacle of what represents us, and the oil is that of the Holy Spirit. And he said, be powerfully filled with the Holy Spirit, and let God, let me change things, and I want to use it, because you're going to get poured out over here, and guess what? You're going to like what's going to happen over here, because it's even better than what I had planned over here. Amen. He said, does God mess up things? No, he doesn't. We mess up what God's plans are. We do it every time, don't we? How many of us have messed up God's plans when you knew God was trying to do the right thing? Well, yeah. And those of you who raise your hand, you're just guilty of sin too. <laughs> I can't say that to you. But the bottom line is this. We see here that there was a, a spirit that was obviously upon Samuel. And God was saying, it's time to get out of it. Now I can see you speak more to that, but I'm not. Because I want us to go to Joshua. Chapter 1. And would you turn there with me? Joshua chapter 1. Because we find there, in the first several verses, what God says to Joshua. Because now there's been a loss. The loss is that Moses died. The patriarch of all patriarchs, basically, of, of, of Israel. You let him out in the wilderness. 
And he didn't get to go to the promised land, but he took a right to it. Now Joshua's one who will take the promised land. However, <coughs> read these words. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, the Lord said to Joshua, son of God, Mo, uh, he goes to Moses, say, Moses, my servant is dead. No, but this God does. God never does not say it didn't happen. He states facts for what they are. You know one thing about the Bible? It tells you what sin is. Yes. It tells you where you mess up. But it doesn't leave you there. No. It tells you when there's disappointment, but it doesn't leave us there. It, doesn't, it tells us what could be happening in the future, but that's not what you have to worry about because God's already seen it and He's got a way through for you. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Amen. Amen. Man, that's awesome. We think about that. And uh, and so what we're happening is this, as we see here is we see these words, he says, Moses, my servant is dead. Now then, you and all these people get ready to cross the Jordan River into the land I'm about to give to them, to the Israelites. I will give you every place where you set your foot, as I promised Moses. Your territory will extend from the deserts to Lebanon, desert to Lebanon, and from the great river of the Euphrates, all the Hittite country, to the Mediterranean Sea in the west. I'm going to pause for a second here. How do they know how big Israel is today? It's basically 160, 80 miles long, and the widest is 60 miles wide. That's not the fullness of the land that God intended Israel to have. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. God has got a lot more territory for them to get back. Yeah. It goes to the Euphrates River to the east, which is a few hundred miles, by the way. So when we think of Israel, we think, well, God back up, got, they got back to the promised land. But God, God wanted them to be there. And that was true. That was only a percentage of what God said they were to be theirs. Are you on the same thing? God gives them that? The cash value of something called OIL will become a problem. Because that will give them power and control in some areas. Because some people say, is there oil under Israel? They're not sure so much under the strip of a 60 by 180. But they think around that seat is quite a bit. Well, that's what makes sense. However, to the east, guess what's out there? Oil. There's oil. It's not in the hands of Israel right now. It's in Jordan and other countries. But the bottom line is this. I'm going to point out for a moment. Because it's not the point of the message. But I want you to get something. As we look prophetically, this, as we see it, tells you what Israel, God's supposed to have given to Israel. That's supposed to be theirs. So we'll talk more about that another time. Verse 5. No one will be able to stand against you all the days. <laughs> <laughs> now the point is this. Get this. Note this. Note this. I will be with you. So when there is problems and loss in your life, because Moses died. And what happened? Moses died. There's a loss. Israel felt it. Joshua felt it. Because who was mentoring Joshua? Moses was. Whether it's a job loss or whatever else that comes our way, God says, I'm still with you. Isn't that awesome? He is with you. You say, I don't feel it. You don't have to feel it. He makes himself present by what he says through his word. I'm there. Just take my word. See, the problem is we always want to feel everything. I don't know if I'm watching, but I was noting because when, you know, at a parade, you're supposed to turn your phones off. And so I did. <coughs> at an intermission, which was an hour and a half, hour and 40 minutes in, a little bit in my butt, story tired. And I, <laughs> I want to get up here. And I'm still trying to figure out this whole play. Anyway, I turned the phone on at 9.15 last night. I went, it says, I saw a picture of where the average boy's cutting the rim, the, the net down. I said, I think I'll be one to go to state. That's pretty cool. But I guarantee you, what they about wrestling? You get out of what you put in. If you want to be a good wrestler, you can't put in just a couple of hours a week. You have to put in the time, the labor, the pain. And yeah, you have to suffer some losses. Not very many people get to go without it. Only one man I know. He paid the price no matter what it took. But uh, it's in the process of things. Grasp this. I don't get a lot of the point here. It's when we realize these things of what we're going through. The fact is, we are people who said, God is with me. 
I can, I can make it. That's why a good coach says, hey, you know what? I think you can do this. I think you can handle it. I will be there for you. But it's even better than just what a coach says. The Lord says, I will be with you. In other words, when you go take the land, I will be making a way for you. That's what it means here. So when you're going through a loss, whether it's death, whether it's divorce, whether it's a job loss, a financial reversal, whatever you have, guess what? The Lord still is there. Amen. I have friends of testimonies of going through great suffering in their lives of things of reverses, but they've always said, when even though we didn't feel like God was there or didn't feel it, we said, God, we know you're here, even though we don't really feel the, the warm fuzzies. You know, we, we're Americans like warm fuzzies. Make me feel good. Well, I'm sorry, most feel good things disappear pretty <laughs> quick. Let me ask you something. How many of you felt good in the morning by night when you were sick of the dog? They've had that, always had that one. We've been there. So, you don't always feel, you can't go by feelings. We go by the knowledge, the fact is that God said, I'll be there. I'm with you. I am the Holy Spirit. We can talk about that today. We're looking at Trinity in our young dog class. We're talking about the Holy Spirit's relevance in our life. The Holy Spirit means the paraclete. He comes out alongside of us. He's there, but we also read Colossians 3 that we know that the Holy Spirit's within us. We are within Him. It's a journey. God, I don't understand it, but I am in you and you are in me, and you're going to make it evident to me. By the way, Lord, we're not sure why we're going through things in our church or whatever we're going through in our personal lives. <clears throat> but God, this isn't my place. This is your place. Amen. It's your people. Amen. Let's get changed by help me to be the bold one that dare to speak to people for Jesus Christ. Not do the, I call the group, the big splash things. We've done some splash things. We've been good. But you know what makes a difference? It's your relationship. One-on-one -on -one people that brings a difference whether they want to be part of the body of Christ or not. And to know Jesus personally. That's where it starts. Because we have to let people know, my Jesus is with me. All the time. All the time. He's there. So we look here, and by the way, it isn't just once. Now can I jump with you for a moment? Because we're going to look at some other verses as well. In between, but jump down with me to verse 9. <laughs> Have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. We're going to look at those words just one. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. For the Lord... Your God will what? Will be, be with you wherever you go. God is good at not just stating things once. He at least states it twice and sometimes he states it three times. Isn't it an amazing thing? However, so you say, okay, all right, you're telling me that God says he, you, God's there for me. He's with me. Yes. Well, let me go a step further. Let me go a step further. Look at this passage of Joshua chapter 1. In verse three, verses here. Three times another phrase shows up. It starts in verse 6. Be strong and courageous. Oh, by the way, it's in verse 7. Be strong and courageous. Oh, by the way, it's in verse 9. Be strong and courageous. What am I to do when I have loss in my life? Number one, know that Jesus is still with you. Number two, stay upon that knowledge and be strong and strong and courageous. Dare, dare to say, you know what? I don't feel, but I know and I will do. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. <laughs> there are times I look and I say, man, Stan, you're the biggest voice in the world. <laughs> you say, you said that from the pulpit. Well, I'll tell you something. There have been times when we have been worse than our, we haven't stood up when we supposed to be. There's times where I realize the Holy Spirit's told me to do something, and I let that little thing called F E A R get away. Mm -hmm. so Some of you aren't too fearful. Mm -hmm. Some of you feel where angels fear to tread sometimes. Mm -hmm. But we'll tell you something. As we look at this passage of Scripture, we're going to have loss. See what's up for Hello? <coughs> you have seen cattle? Yeah. They used that horn. So what? They had to seal it. And used it in California. They had plenty of it. He didn't tell him to say, be strong and courageous. In that case, he said, no, go and do what I told you to do. 
I know some of you, because you've shared with me the fact is when you lost a loved one, that you literally felt paralysis, emotionally and physically. You didn't want to get up from the front row to go to the kitchen and get food because it just was too much labor. Let's face it, if you were even close to what you love, you lost it. That's what you feel, don't you? <laughs> but you force yourself to try to eat a few crows. You try to eat something. And each day, it gets a little better. But the bottom line is this. You make it. But we need to be reminded from God's Word that there is joy and hope when we have loss. And it's right here, this Word of God, right here. Yes. Man, I'll tell you what, brothers and sisters. We need help. But we have to realize the fact is we have a God who said, where do you think I went? I've been here the whole time. <laughs> Some of us get mad, we flip a board, and we get mad at God. We get mad at people in church because the fact is they didn't do things we thought they should have done. We carry on and we have little hissy fits because of what we feel in our hearts and spirits. And the fact is, God says, hold on. I haven't changed. You know, maybe people let you down, but the fact is, I don't let you down. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. That sometimes it takes. We feel like God let us down. Well, if God would have been here, because you remember the story of Mary and Martha regarding a certain brother named Lazarus? Mm -hmm. Remember the story? <laughs> you know, if you'd been here, Jesus, if you'd been really perfect when you're supposed to have been here, because you knew you'd done it. You know, could have happened. Now let's see, I'm adding a little bit. I know that. This is pretty human element in here. You know how you think? What's how you think? If you'd just been here, this wouldn't have happened. I just love people in football games. If we just kick the family going and then the third quarter, we'd won the game. <laughs> Stick old ladies, you know how much has changed from, okay, before, okay, he held one down and they didn't pick the field goal. So you know what? A whole series of plays developed from there from then on out. If you made a field goal, it would have been a whole different series of places and it might have been worse loss. But we whine and grind our beer about the things that we wish if you had just been here. God. And God says, in your loss, I'm still there. And I'm not putting anybody out this morning, but I know recently somebody's been through some pain in their life and loss. In conversation, the person was not sure how they would feel comfortably because when that loss would come. And I remember saying the fact is, you might be amazed what God will give you at the moment of that loss. Because of something that was remembered from years before. And understandably, nothing they did about it. And that person was able to be there by the bedside of the lost one. And the fact is, a person testifies to the fact that was a loss there? Was a pain? Sure, it was. Mm -hmm. This is what I heard. He said to me, You know, Stan, it was peaceful. Now, that person knew Christ. That helps. That is, that, that. Yes. And it's peaceful. At that moment, the person that wasn't sure how it was going to go realized that Jesus said, I'm right here. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yes. Jesus said, I'm right here. And then he says, be strong and courageous. That means to do what I will give you the capacity to do, to start doing. It. <clears throat> so like when Saul was, or Samuel was grieved in 1 Samuel 16 about what Saul had become, and he fell in loss. God said, fill up the oil. Fill up the oil. And he didn't say, sit here and cry in your ear. What did he say? And go. And he told him where to go. Go to Jesse. For I will anoint one of his sons will be chosen to be the king of Israel. That was David. I want to encourage you this morning, on this morning, as we as a church move forward. I wish all of our family was here this morning. So I guess they all would do the same thing. But they're not. And that's okay. You're here. Hear me as your pastor. God says, I'm still here. You're serving me, 
be obedient to me, be strong and courageous, because guess what? Something I have not intentionally missed in this passage of Joshua. And that is this. Go back to verse 3. What did he say to do? What he's going to do for them? I will give you every place where you set your feet. Brothers and sisters, when I have people going, what are you going to do? We're losing people, whatever else. You know what you're doing? You bought into the life saving. Mm -hmm. You know what God said to you? You get your feet out where you're supposed to go with them. Don't trust the pastor, because he will mess it up. I should lead you, but hear me. God's calling you to go into a territory that he wants you to still claim for, your, for his name. Yeah. Remember what I said about that passage here? Where you see Israel today? That ain't the Israel that God intended for them to have. It's only part of it. Read the passage here, chapter 3, chapter 1. What did I just tell you earlier was the part of this message? Israel is supposed to go through the Euphrates River. Into the Mediterranean Sea and all that. It's supposed to be a big area. But it's amazing how God has taken a little piece of land and it is a thorn that everybody's side into the world today. Isn't that wonderful? Did you know why? God is with them. <laughs> You know what I want you to show me? And you're going to say, don't take this wrong. And some of you are going to say, oh, I just can't believe they won't see that. I want us to be a Thor and save the side. Amen. 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 We are. Yeah. I want to say that. I agree with you. Yes, we are. But I want us to be so passionately a Thor and his side. Because we're faithfully declaring and standing on the word of God and we're courageous. Because you know what? I still believe, even though we've been having it up to now, you know what I still believe? That some days, not that far future, there's going to be two doors like that because there's frames to that wall behind the check You know that? Mm -hmm. How many knew that? Not everybody knows it. On that west wall behind the check rack, there's two door frames there. So we can build that. That worship center can hold five to six hundred. Now, I'm not here about numbers, but I am about numbers. You know why? God is concerned about numbers. He the Bible. <laughs> but numbers means we have become a people that have to step out and claim territory. That means step out and believe that Jesus has got people to be redeemed yet. And we are not ashamed to talk to people. I'm not against events. Don't take me wrong. But the difference is this. 80% of every church group is because people in the seat declare Jesus or talk to somebody or invite them to church. Or talk to them personally about their relationship with Jesus Christ. And they come to Christ and then become part of the church. And quite frankly, don't pray to bring people into the church body here. You go, what? Don't pray for that. Pray that God put you out there. Because what does it tell us in Matthew 28? Go into all the world. Make disciples of all big people groups. So it means. So don't sit here on your keisters. That's what God's whole Saul was able to do. Don't just stand up the oil here and you're, you're holding the oil and sit there. He said, Now go. Because I have chosen. The word chosen means there's a plan for the future. God has a plan for us. We have a plan here. That's how we go through loss. Do we like loss? Nobody likes loss. Whether it's financial, whether it's divorce, whether it's whether it's uh uh, death or whatever. I mean, I was sitting there last night coming back home, even though my eyes were blowing me. And by the way, I, I love my wife. She had to pray for her her, her husband yesterday. Because what you don't realize, that man, this transmission is starting to go out of it. I have a new transmission sitting in cold motors right now. But I'm holding off putting it in because it's running pretty good. But last night, they decided to give me at midnight some fun. I hate being out of nowhere. At that time of night. <laughs> and, 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 and that big, that shows that shows the engine will tell me, I know there's a problem with transmission. I know that. And it was pulling down, it was kicking around on the hills a little bit. Once I get older, I was fine. But there was that moment I was sitting there going, you know what? Uh, I was having thoughts of stress. I wasn't feeling overly strong and courageous at that moment. <laughs> <laughs> My wife 
said, Dear Lord, and she just said, We pray. I mean, wonderful prayer. Lord, get it home. So I said this morning, I'll well, offer a gift card or get us this work, the church this morning. It did. However, what would you know? I have to put a transmission there. But now, here's the point. I kind of push it because I'm holding up. I'm a tight guy. I don't want to give it money. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah. How strong and courageous are you, Pastor, to walk 150 miles out in the hot thunders at night? You know, whatever. The point is this. There's moments we have that moment we don't feel strong and courageous, but God said, I've got territory for you to play. There are people, yet, yeah, I tell you what, I've had people tell me, oh, we don't need more churches now. We need or not. And I said, you know what? It was steady show the churches, that, there's less churches now than there was, back when the survey was done, that if every person attended church in Dickens County, the buildings we have could not hold everybody. Any of Right. We couldn't hold them all because we'd, we'd have to build more buildings or make bigger ones. So don't tell me Dixon County alone because obviously our church reaches up into many counties here. But do not tell me that we don't have people that need to be in this body of Christ. They need to know about Jesus. But you're going to have to be the one who invites them. Because God's saying, I'm going with you. I am with you. Be strong and courageous because I have more land for you. So what do we do when there's a loss? <coughs> God's got something new for you. I uh, <clears throat> have a friend who went through a very painful time in his life. God used him. He's not using my little ministry. He was a pickup man for St. Andrews here. Derek Rogers. Has been here for many years now. Derek said he got saved in the Southern Baptist Church, but he got Convention of the Sunday God, you're not too bad. He said, God called me to preach, he called me to be a pastor. I didn't know Derek, and Derek came and he preached a revival for us at Abbey Road Christ Church, a traditional church. That cowboy stood that church up on its ear. Half the rodeo committee came to hear him preach, and most of them didn't know Jesus. We saw that church packed out every night. We saw, I heard Derek preach the word. But within a year, because you have to realize a year and a half before that, he lost his young, beautiful wife to kids. Matter of weeks after he preached one Sunday in my church, he was up here for the road, he stayed over and preached. She contracted cancer. That man preached his wife's funeral message, holding his four-year-old son at the time. His son is now in his twenties. Now, what do I say about Derek? Derek Rogers, great guy. I'm trying to get him up here, like pull teeth him up here, because he's doing something that God said to do. Because you know what, God has a new turn for him to go. Because you know what happened. He went through a painful thing because the fact is he fell in love with a young lady and he said, one thing I didn't do, I didn't pray about it. He fell in love with this beautiful lady. Her dad was the richest man in East Texas. There's people around this territory that dated this lady. Beautiful lady. <laughs> How old they? I met her. She be a nice young lady. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, drop that gorgeous. He married her. I got a message from him a few months later. He said, I didn't pray about this. I made the biggest mistake in my life. He suffered a loss of his wife in death. And because of the power and the issue behind the fact is that family and the, the father the way he was and her as well, that marriage and the divorce. Two losses. <clears throat> if anybody had a right to curl up and hide somewhere, Derek did. But Derek came out of a background where his dad was a brawler fighter. If you wanted to have a fight, he said he called his dad. He 
He said, I got saved. He said, I was still in the rodeo circuit. He said, I was a young guy, and the three of us were traveling. He said, while they were in the bar, we drinking and crowds, and I was out there reading my Bible, trying to learn how to be what God wanted me to be. Tell me to be a businessman, tell me to help me a husband, all that. But he said, I messed up once, really once. <coughs> he said, that it was over for him. But Derek and I kind of lost track of each other a little bit. I mean, I knew where he was at, he was around Athens, Texas. And then I heard a word. Have you heard it? Derek, what's Derek doing? He's pastor of the church. He's what? He said he would never be a pastor. He preached, but he would never be a pastor. There is a difference. Right? A lot of guys can preach, but they won't be a pastor. If I had really known where he was at the moment, Terry Faulkner, Larry was with me, I think. We came back from Duquesne, Texas. Weren't you all with Terry? Yeah, there. We wouldn't have gone to the Cowboy Church. We did, which was fine, because just a month, we had a month before had Justin Todd here at our church, and we were there. Justin Todd was put singing at, at Cowboy Church in Ellis County, the second largest Cowboy Church in the world. But in course, of course, Canada, Cowboy Church, of course, again, just a matter of miles back on the road. We just come by, of course, but it was the church of my friend Derek, who's now pastoring, and it was exploded. What I'm saying is this God has taken Derek, and he took God where he, well, he messed up. He said, I messed up once. Well, how many times have we messed up? There's been loss. He had lost, first of all, it wasn't because of, his, of him that he lost his dear wife. He outstepped wrong. He said, I didn't really pray about this. Regarding, he was caught up by the union, and then he ran them by the heart of the lady. But God was taken, and he listened to God. He said, I knew God was still there with me. And I had to be strong and courageous again. And step out of place, and I had nowhere to go. And God was using Derek mightily, so mightily that they had a big deal. Of course, he had several miles south of Dallas. They rented the big rodeo arena there in Mesquite, Texas. And he was the key guy. In fact, I saw him on the Cowboy Channel. <coughs> talking about this big event that he was one of the prime movers of. And I thought, God, has it taken him? And he's got borders that are a lot bigger than Corsicana. Are you with me? Are you tracking with what I'm saying? What God does with us when there's loss, what does God wants to do? I know he's with me. The Lord is. God tells me to be strong and courageous. And he tells me to go out and take territory that has yet been not claimed. But there's four things, one more, and it's the most significant of all. Verse 8. Keep this book back up. Verse 7. Right after it says, be strong and courageous. Be careful to obey all the law my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. <laughs> Keep this book of the law always on your lips. <clears throat> Meditate on it day and night, so you can be careful to do everything written in it. Then you'll be prosperous and successful. So, what's Pastor Sam saying? What's God's word saying is, be a man and a woman, even when you don't be like of the word of God. You want success? Look at what God's doing. Look at what God wants to do in you. Be in the word. Because you know how, you know, you get straight. When you understand the character of God, you said, I will never leave you. But we have to speak. Just as Pastor Stan said, so as Pastor Stan said, he won't leave us. No, you've got to take it over for yourself by what God's Word said to you. Not to what I just said to Now, would you know, as I testified earlier, yes, as I encourage somebody to say, you know what? I might be surprised. At the time of death, we love what it will be like. And that person was graciously and wonderfully blessed with the peace of God. They take away the pain, but there's a peace in the pain. <laughs> we won those words specifically as she did. But God's telling us to be people to meditate on the word. 
Chew it up. Kill it. Don't turn away from it, right? Or Even Derek would say, you know, when he for a moment, I turned away from God's word. When he married me, But he said, you know what? I'll never be. He said, I got back to the word. I realized where I messed up. I want to be sure with God. You know what God did? Took Derek and took his. And he, God's used him. He was courageous and said that. And he's been blowing the socks off. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? So I want you to know. I want you to encourage this morning. That what you might feel in loss. God says, hey, I'm going to make it victorious. So I ask you this morning. Maybe you felt a loss in your life. It could be this morning you just need to come forward and say, you know what, I just need to stand before God and before this body without having to go into all the details. But the fact is, you know what, I said, you know what, I've been living with fear. I've been letting the loss of things dictate my life. It could be this morning you just need to give to Jesus. You know, it's been a while since I've done all the call, which I like to do, maybe right last week, and it's what God answered. But I'll tell you something more. God wants to meet you right where you're at in your life. You might know Jesus, but you have felt lost in things in life. You might be dwelling on something that's been a loss for a long time. God says, hold on. Let me fill you up with my oil and my Holy Spirit. Let us dare to risk. Let's go out and claim the property that I called you. People are not property, but he's got places for you to go. If I just say, just for a moment, as we come to our time of worship, you can do As I said last week, when we taught the Cowboy Churches, we did not do all the calls, I go from Hogwash. If we get on a bowl for eight seconds in front of the public, we get slanted to the ground and get up and try to walk like we're tough. We can be tough with Jesus public when we all be. If there's somebody this morning here, all I'm asking, I'll go push you all of you. But if maybe there's a loss in your life, the fact is you need to be renewed in your heart and say, you know what, today I want to say, Lord, I recognize you're here. You're in me. I recognize I'm called to be strong and courageous. God, I'll step out. But I'm scared. You know what? God doesn't let you. He doesn't beat you up or say you're scared. He just wants you to be obedient to dare to step out and be courageous. Be strong and courageous. And make a difference. Because I think there's people in this world, the fact is, God's looking to you. They're looking to you to be different. They're looking to you to dare to open your mouth. I mean, everyone in this room, I know in this room right here, the influence you have is probably three to five hundred people in this room alone right here. That are unsaved. You say, how do you know that? Because if you have connections at all, there's a lot of people you probably never mentioned, but it could be some people who know you claim Jesus. It's time to be so courageous. You say, you know what? If you don't know Jesus, what does Jesus mean to you? It's amazing that question raises. What does Jesus mean to you? A lot of times there are great things that I'm really not sure. But I kind of like the Lord. And guess what God will do? He'll let you have property. It's more than just me that whole strip of land that they like Israel is. He's got this land that's always said, This is supposed to be your land. Figuratively speaking, God's going to go through you. Even this morning, just as I just need a couple of prayers, just ask for moments. I need to stand and, look up and just renew my call of courage and knowing the fact is to say, I am saying, I know my Lord's with me. And I'm going to walk in Him. Anybody this morning? I'm just staying there. It's just your time. Just you and the Lord at this moment. You're here to stand, just publicly declaring that. I will be strong and courageous in Him. I will be on the Word of God. And I will claim territory I've never had before by the power of the Holy Spirit. Anybody else? Not going to push. This is you, this is you and the Lord time, okay?
Lord, remove the spirit of my fear. And let the boldness of the Holy Spirit be mine. That's my prayer for all of you. And for your pastor to you. Let's pray for me. Just, by the way, when I preach to you, I have to preach to stand on it too. Because <laughs> we all had a moment to be. We can see here. Is there here on this little street for a bit? Speak with other people coming. Let God just minister to you today. One of my dear friends is in the room. Can you do anything? I love you. I knew with him some things I was scared to go with because of the fact that I didn't know how people were going to respond because of the dynamics. My help is the chaplain doesn't always know what you're going to walk into. But when we have God on our side, you know what? We go to territory. It's amazing how God helps us make territory for Him. Just like in December, the death of a 45 year old man was called to in the middle of the night.